Welcome to Tone Talks. Welcome to Tone Talks. Welcome. Hey everybody, this is Antonio Moore from Tone Talks. I have Chris Smalls from Amazon. Uh, the whole debacle that's going on over the last few weeks involving uh, the coronavirus. Um, I'm on to discuss what's been going on. I want to overview everything before I go do that. Let me just say, um, you want to say hello to the audience? How you doing? Thank you for having me today. Yeah, so, um, you know, Chris Maul led the uh, Amazon protest, I believe, in New Jersey. He was a supervisor, and he was uh, fired for not adhering, supposedly, to the social distancing policies. But it looks like retaliation, possibly. Um, you have him uh, actually staging a walkout. I commend you for that, brother. What you saw from people is uh, essentially uh, all across the country stories that came out that actually showed support for that. And I, I, I just wanted to say, um, you know, from people all across the country, I started a group called ADOS, uh, or a movement called ADOS around American descent of slavery as we push for reparations. Your story, uh, like so many others who are hearing during coronavirus, better exposes why we needed a, a demand for equality and reparations in America for the American descent of slavery. Um, I'll just let you start off before I go right into my questions. What 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 would you want to say to the audience about what happened that maybe you haven't gotten to say anywhere else? Black folk. You said black folks? Yeah. Well, um, what I'm going to say this to black folks. Uh, if you do work for Amazon, um, we know who we're working for now. Uh, yeah. If y'all understand the leak that came out yesterday about me, that uh, they smeared me, or they plan on smearing me, and um, they insulted not just me, but they insulted minorities that work for them. That tells you their mentality right there, how they think about us, how they think about their employees. They don't care about y'all. And um, if you work for them, you might want to find another uh, company to work for because... That right there was disgusting. And as black people, this is the time to stand up. You want to take the power back? Uh, do what I did. So let's uh, let's go in. let's go back a step. There's an article that came well, a set of articles that came out around somebody found the document or said an email. Maybe you can clarify of an Amazon executive with a supposed plan to smear you. Can you cl explain that what came out and everything? Yeah, sure. Um, well, obviously, somebody uh, within their circle uh, is not agreeing with what they're doing um, to their people. It was leaked. I had the entire email before it even came out. Um, I had it all morning before oh. the press got a hold of it. So it's actual facts. Uh, what I can say is Jeff Bezos was present. So these are people that's around him, the conversation that was held in front of him. Somebody there. It's not agreeing with it. Somebody there was like, hey, there's something very wrong with this situation. They decided to lose their job right there on the spot because I heard they were fired five minutes later, which is, they probably did that on purpose because if you look into the deeper root cause of this situation, the COVID-19 is killing people. It's mm. killing them. And um, we don't have any casualties yet, not that I know of, with uh, Amazon employees. But it's only a matter of time. You Man, know, it's let, only let me, a matter of time. Let me frame this up, what, every, what you're actually speaking to. Again, and this is Chris Smalls. He staged the walkout in uh, supposedly... In Staten Island. Staten Island. New York. Yeah, Staten yeah, Island. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, essentially, there's an article that came out on the... And, and the Guardian covered it, along with other places. I'm to read a little bit. Amazon execs labeled fired worker not smart or articulate in leaked PR notes. In meeting with CEO Jeff Bezos, General Counsel suggested it would be good for company if media focused on Chris Small. And I'm going to read a little of this article, but understand when we're talking about Jeff Bezos, we're talking about the richest man in the world. So the richest man in the world is in this room. What it reminds me of, for those people that are watching or listening to this, go back and look at Carnegie. Go back and look at p and What we know is after slavery, black men were put into into basically caves to pull out iron ore for white companies. One of those white companies was U.S. Steel. What you see is that Carnegie used to break unions. So to think that Carnegie wasn't there when these black men were treated that way 
at the turn of the century after slavery in this period between Jim Crow and slavery where black men, black bodies were basically building cities like Alabama to not see the link line of having Jeff Bezos in the room with Chris Smalls. Again, this is all being done cyclically here. But reading this article from The Guardian to, to specifically frame Chris's situation before I bring him back in, Amazon executive denigrated a fired work, warehouse worker as not smart or artic articulate in a meeting with Jeff Bezos, according to a leaked memo obtained by Vice News. Chris Smalls, who had worked for Amazon for five years, was fired shortly after he helped organize a work stoppage at the company's warehouse on Staten Island, New York, in protest over a lack of protective gear and hazard pay. Amazon's general counsel, David Zopoleski, in notes from a meeting of top executives obtained by Vice, wrote he's not smart or articulate, and to the extent the press wants to focus on us versus him, we will be in a much stronger PR position. So my point in doing a show like this is to basically give you a forum where we can frame who you are, where you come from, and that you are smart and articulate, that you are a black man out here trying to do right and do right by not only, like, the company that you work for, you know, because as I saw, you do good work. You're a manager. You had to get uh, promotions. Were you promoted by Amazon at several points? Yeah, you yes, had to sir. Get, Le less than six months. Yeah, you had to get promotions, and then essentially you're trying to do right by workers that probably are under you, looking to you for guidance. So, you know, is there anything else you want to say about this memo, and then we'll go right into some of the questions? Yeah, sure. Like I said, um, you got to wake up. Um, the whole country, the whole world, um, black people especially. Um, I don't know. My life changed two weeks ago. I wasn't this. I was a regular father, a three single father. Somehow, some way, on March 30th, um, God spoke through me. He told me to go do this. I don't know why. I still don't know why. Um, all I know is that I have a purpose now. Um, and the purpose is to deliver the message that God wants me to give y'all. And uh, I think I know what it is. And I'm here just to do that. You know, um, I've been talking to Reverend Jesse Jackson. He's been calling me every night now. So I have Jesse Jackson full support. So there's a reason he's calling me. He told me last night on the phone. Um, this is the first time everybody going to hear this. But he told me I remind him of Martin Luther King. Um now, I'm not going to put that out there as I am Martin Luther King or anywhere of that nature or that stature. But um, for Jesse Jackson to say, you know, what he said to me last night and um, the conversations we're having, um, I have a purpose for us. And um, I need everybody to listen. And when I deliver these messages, uh, I need the world to wake up because this is life or death. And no, I, I hope I everybody understand. pay attention. And that, and that's kind of been uh, you know where where I will where I will um, kind of jump in and add to that message because I've, I've met Jesse as well is is we all have an obligation during this kind of moment to particularly as America descends to slavery to stand up to to power when power has mistreated us and I think that what you're doing is one example of that we saw for the last year as America descends to slavery we put people on the on Supreme Court steps for a civil rights case um, just in November when the NAACP didn't show up. And this is the role now that black people are going to have to stand up for for their own families, if nothing else. And so let me ask you this first question. Let's get right back into the meat of things. Um, you talked about, and I've seen you talk about essentially what happened. How, like, just tell me with the coronavirus and working at Amazon, going all the way from February, say, 1st forward, Give me a short syn synopsis of what happened. People were getting sick around me. Um, my coworkers, employees, one by one, domino effect. Beginning of March, um, I noticed that. I tried to be proactive about the situation. Um, we didn't have any confirmed cases. I wanted to escalate it to the higher ups, the HR department, um, to whoever I could to put on notice that there's something wrong here. Um, and I was ignored, you know, pretty much. It was uh, swept under the rug because there was no confirmed cases. So I had to protect myself. I took some time off, but that didn't mean that I forgot about my people because, you know, these are my extended family. I work with these people 40, 50 hours a week. 
I see them more than I see my own kids. I go to parties with them bars. They come to my house. We hang out for years. We have relationships. I can go sleep on any one of their couches. Same with me. Vice versa. So, behind the scenes, I was fighting for them. Sending out letters to the CDC, the health department, the state department, the government. I did everything in my power behind the scenes, but it didn't work. We overwhelmed over here in New York. It's the epic center of the pandemic. So, I don't blame that on, on um, you know, the state and the government as well. I know what's going on. But, um, you know, as we know, I had to pay bills. I had to go back to work eventually. So, I went back on March 24th. My colleague that I work hand-in-hand with, she's a, on the same level as me. She was sick. Um, 9 o'clock in the morning. I was like, yeah, what's going on? She's like, I'm sick. I went tested. I went and got tested last night on uh, Monday. And I'm, we all know you don't get the test unless you're showing severe symptoms. So I was like, yeah, you got to go home. You know, we had a brief conversation, about five minutes less. But she's been around my employees all week, uh, 10 hours. How many so people did you manage? Hundreds. Okay, okay. And how long were you at Amazon? <laughs> Almost five years. A little right. less than five. Okay. So you were there five years. I'm sorry, and I cut you off, but continue. She's around the employees. I joined the frame. Right. Yeah. So um, two hours later, she went home immediately. But two hours later, we had a manager's meeting, a small manager's meeting we have every day. And um, that's when we learned about the first confirmed case that happened that happened on March 11. So it's weird because the employee wasn't in the building for a number of days, but we just le- we just now learning about it for the first time. So I'm like... Uh, just to give y'all another back history, Queens, New York had a, a one confirmed case. They closed the building down. You can look it up. And um, they sanitized it, sent everybody home with pay just a week prior. So I was thinking, we're going to do the same thing. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's close the building down. Let's get up everybody out of here, sanitize it. We come back to work. What's sanitizing including? Well, professionally, they, they'll pay for a company to come in there and you know do a thorough cleaning. That's what they did with Queens, New York. Uh-huh. Um, didn't happen. They were like, no, business as usual. Don't tell the employees. Uh, we're going to the individuals that were on that side of the building. I was like, what? That doesn't make sense to me. So they're like, yeah, don't panic. We don't want to cause a panic. That was the last time I worked for Amazon. Um, I took my stance right there before, way before they fired me. I walked out the door at 12 o'clock, told as many people as I could. Um, I went home and did another round of calling everybody I could, State Department, Health Department, no answer. But um, I didn't give up. I took action. I came to work. Well, I came to the building every single day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, up to the point they quarantined me. Um, Just me, by the way. Um, I sat in the cafeteria for eight hours a day, telling as many people as I could. Um, This coronavirus is in the building. We need to take a stance. I marched groups into the office every day. 10 people, 15, uh, jumping on back of the general managers. Uh, let him know, like, hey, we're concerned. We want the building closed down. Um, he basically just like, uh, I'm going to make a phone call. He sat on the phone for hours, allegedly. Nothing happened. So Wednesday, my colleague tested positive. She texted me like, hey, where you at? I said, I'm in the building cafeteria she said yeah i tested positive i said oh my gosh i ran to the office like you need to close this building down now she tested positive she's a supervisor i know what our job entitles she's been exposed to hundreds of people nothing happened and then and let Great. me ask you let me ask you a couple questions right there sure the first thing is those people that are working under you do they have medical coverage from amazon Depends if they signed up for it. Okay. They some did, up some for didn't. It. But it was offered by Amazon. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the company offers full medical, dental, vision, and all of that. Uh, you just got to sign up for it. If you don't sign up, you don't get it okay. for a whole year. You got a window, a uh, certain window to get it. Okay. I and, think it's, and what if you're hired after that window? You can still get it. Uh, if you get employed, you can get it. But uh, if you are associate that was hired prior to, then you have a small window. I forgot what months you got to do it, but it's like three months or two months you got until the deadline ends. But if you're a new employee, you got you can you can get it. Okay, now um, it. describe the building itself 
um, the size of the building and the number of employees that and the exposure that we're talking about. This building is 900,000 square feet. It fits 14 NFL football fields. 5,000 employees that come in and out that building a week from five different boroughs in New York. How close do they work with each other? Like how distance-wise? Depending on what you're doing, you could be hand-in-hand. Hand. Depending on what you're doing in there. It's, uh, you got, they got individual stations, but like there's certain things where you need teamwork as well. Working in a warehouse, you got lifting, pallets, uh, boxes, females in there that need the help. So depends on what you're doing. It depends on the job. So it's hard to do six feet distance. What you're getting at, yes, there is no social distancing working there. I mean, there's certain times you can do it, but not all the time. And that's the problem. We don't know where this virus is. You don't know who got it. You don't know how to stop it, right? Yeah. So you and, don't. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm backing up. When we look at like your personal like experience with management above you, had you ever been told anything about, I want to use the exact language that they use, not being smart or articulate? Like, had that ever shown up in any of your reviews? Never. What Never. level did you start off at at Amazon? That'll help. What level? Yeah, when you first no. started. I made, I started off level one making $12 an hour. And what did you reach to, like, for, for our, our, for us to understand? What level 27, did you reach? 20, 27. 27 How many, how many promotions is that over the course of five years? They only promoted me one time, <laughs> but guess what? That's only that's a that's a whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I'm not even gonna get into all of that. Yeah, but that's fine. I should have been. I should have been way higher. If, if you want to know the truth, but uh, I'm not greedy. You know, I'm not. It, it's never about money with me. Obviously, I'm a people's person, and that's why I I believe this slim reason why the the world is gravitating to me right now. Um, I, somehow the world fell in my lap and I'm just embracing it right now and trying to use this platform to spread awareness of what's really going on with these uh, type of companies. So so you got a raise from 12 to 27 and essentially... Well, gradually, gradually. Gradually. You, that means mm-hmm. that you, you might have got one promotion, but you got several raises. Yes. Okay. So, that, I mean, those are usually signs that you're doing good work. Um let me ask you another question. How long did you try to get management to prepare for the coronavirus? And what did you specifically ask them to do? Well, for weeks, since the beginning of March, beginning of March, first week. Um, and all we wanted to do was close the building down and sanitize it. That's all we wanted. We didn't want anything else. We wanted to be paid by the buildings being clean and to be sanitized. None of this would have happened. The world wouldn't even know Chris Smalls if they did what they were supposed to do. But they forced me to take action because I'm I'm just built different. Um, I'm not I'm not like everybody else. I, I stand for what I feel is right, whether it's not right. You know, I just I have to stand up and um, I put my career on the line. But I I do it a million times. And what about masking and gloves? Did y'all ask for masking gloves? We got gloves, but they're not latex. You know, these are not med- we're not in medical field. You got to have work gloves, which is grip, rubber grip with cotton on the back. You know, they sweat. If you sweat, it goes through the pores, and they're not meant for protection for a virus, at least. And um, the mask, no, we didn't have no mask. We didn't have none. We had we maybe had a, a small amount, but that inventory was depleted. It was time we was. Yeah, we didn't have any. Did you guys you know? ask for any? Of course we did. Okay. Of course people That's did. But uh, it was too late. It's too late. You know, I heard they shipping them out now, but obviously it's only because of me. You know, this is a major concern. So you um, organized the actual walkout, as I understand it. Um, how many people joined that walkout, and what was the goal of the actual walkout itself? Like the specific deliverable that you wanted to achieve man all right uh who joined i tell you what i put this walk out together in less than 24 hours i was quarantined on saturday saturday morning by amazon yeah by 
by I don't know who actually. Somebody that worked for Amazon. Somebody that's a medical expertise. Cause but it was the company that quarantined you, not like the government or anything like that. I'm asking. Okay. Go ahead. Well, yeah, somebody that works for the company, and um, yeah, like I said, it was like I said, it was, it's so odd how they only quarantined me. Sorry about that. Somebody calling. Somebody quarantined me, but not my employees that have been around exposed. My not even the person I drive to work with got quarantine pay. Mm-hmm. Didn't make sense. Just just me. So you no, know, take a note of that. And I had 24 hours to make take action. So, well, actually, I had more than that. I wanted to do it on Monday. Everything I did was strategic, from the timing to the day. Uh, with, this is what I did. I just explained it so y'all understand. I contact every media outlet I could uh, throughout the week. No response from the media. They're like, oh. Don't worry. We'll we'll um, get back to you. Oh, we'll give you a call if anything else is not important. You know, one of those. You know, hitting up the media like, hey, look, I'm planning on uh, doing something with Amazon because they're not treating us right. They brushed it off, brushed it off, brushed it off. But one particular article uh, ended up publishing the New York Post, and that's what caused the snowball effect with the media. That was my best weapon right there to get the media. Attention. This is before the walkout or after the walkout? Uh, this is before the walkout. Okay, go so ahead. this is Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. I'm working on getting the media's attention. So I'm like, I had to fabricate the story a little bit. You know, they calling me up now. Now they calling me because it got published. So they're like, "Are you planning a walkout?" I'm talking about everybody calling me. I said, "Yeah." How many people? Now I know if I say a low number, they're gonna be like, "Ah." So I had to gas it up a little bit. 200 people coming out. 100, 200. Really? You just didn't know how many people would join in. But go ahead. I didn't, I didn't have a clue. Okay. But guess what? I knew what I was going to do. Everything I did was strategic. Um, basically, I knew that we had lunch at 1230. I looked at the weather. For Monday, it's about 65 degrees. So I know how Amazon operates. People like to eat outside when it's nice. Perception is everything. So... Whether we had 50 or 100 people, I knew people was going to be outside. And um, I gave the world just that, what they wanted to see, a walkout. And uh, here we are today. But, uh, yeah, you know. But there was a lot of people out there. It definitely was. Definitely. Okay. And um, the people that joined me, they joined on the spot, some of them. But I had a good core, about 20, 20 to 25 people. And also this union, uh, Make the Road to New York, they jumped in last minute to support. So it helped, definitely helped uh, get the story out there. And um, everything came together at the right time. Like, I can't even explain how it, it happened. But I know the last day, like Sunday night, late night, I knew I went to bed that night confident that we were going to have a great day on Monday. And, um, you know, I definitely, my stomach was turning. I couldn't sleep. I still haven't really been sleeping. But, uh. You know, my stomach was turning, like, what is what is going to happen tomorrow? And, yeah, I mean, I gave the world what they wanted to see, and I, I gave the people a voice that day. That was the main objective. Put Amazon on notice. Give these people a voice. Give them the, the courage to step up and speak their truth. And that's exactly what happened. That's all I needed. And I had it for, I got the rest from here. That's and all then, I needed. Were, were, did you guys actually have a union yourself inside of Amazon? No. Okay. Amazon is anti-union. They get any whip for that, you'll be terminated. Okay. And so. um, you talked about, uh, I believe, I, I heard prior about a manager and a trip to Washington that kind of like triggered your, like, kind of like spidey senses in a sense. or, or Absolutely. You know, as to the coronavirus. Explain that to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had a couple managers out there for training um, when Seattle was the Epic Center in the beginning. And um, like late February, they came back and one of them left shift early because she wasn't feeling well. And I'm not saying she had the virus, but you're not going to take a chance when you ain't, you're dealing with a, an invisible monster right now, right? So I, I kept a mental note of that, of course, because like I said, one by one, I'm seeing people get sick. And I'm not taking any chances with my health or my family. So I got three kids. I haven't seen them in two months. Thank God. I have, you know, I 
definitely like you know what let me stay away from them as well mm. but um you know this i definitely took a mental note of that and um i think i did it for the, the greater good because here we are now and um it's 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 scary what we're dealing with and there's people all over the globe right now that are contact i just got the phone with somebody from germany germany um i've been on the phone with canada tokyo brazil i'm in every country that you know reached out to me now so it's like they relate to what i'm going through they know exactly what i'm going through i need to do something and um i'm going to do something you know it's going to be a while it's going to be a long battle but as long as people support me I'll keep going as long as it takes. All right. Now, the next the next thing, I, you know, what's interesting is I'm framing this in context of there's a recent Supreme Court decision that came down regarding the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and black folks' right to contract from Byron Allen uh, made it really hard to bring racial discrimination cases. And the interesting thing I see when I look at your case is the this contextualizes the importance of not having a but for standard, meaning in your case, Amazon clearly can can make the argument that there are other reasons that they decided to terminate you other than mm -hmm. race. Whereas if the standard was motivating factor, I think maybe you could get more evidence to see whether race was actually part of the decision making process, meaning motivating factor just to get the preliminary uh, like evidentiary phases, meaning meaning. You just got to show that race was one of the reasons they targeted you versus showing race is the reason. And I think this is classically the reason that the Supreme Court missed the mark on that decision two weeks ago. And now I don't even know if you could even use racial discrimination as a result of that decision. But looking now to a specific question, do you... Uh, at all look at all right let me ask you was there anybody else that was quarantined and terminated in the way that you were no okay so you you're you're absolutely right about that uh the supreme court decision i, I i've done some research i talked to some lawyer um can't really expose that right now yeah. well yeah the lawyer that's representing me she um she broke it down to me too the same way you did and um uh, but we have something else in mind um yeah. We have another angle that I'm I'm on board for it, and uh, once the once we get all the facts together, it's going to benefit me in a way. It's going to be, benefit everybody, um, including people of, of color, and yeah, that's and what just, I'm. I guess it's just crazy to me because here we are as black folks, and this just kind of like makes it clear what you know. Me uh, as a co-founder of Ados, we put 600 people on the steps of the Supreme Court. And there were literally were nobody else there. I'll give you two factors, though. Go ahead. Um, just think about, if you think about who works for Amazon, mm -hmm. it's minorities. Most of the buildings, actually every building, is near an urban area. Mm. Got to keep that in mind. Every building across the nation. Always hiring minorities. Off the hood. No sugar coat on that. They straight from the hood. I love it though. I love my people. Um, I work with them. You know, I didn't turn gangsters into supervisors. Mm. That's what I've done. So that's the respect I I gain. I don't care. I don't care where you come from. I don't care if you go home and smoke weed every day. If you're a good worker, I don't care what you do. But if you come to work and you do your job. Don't bother me. That's all that matters. As long as you don't make me look bad, you be good. So. That aside, and think about the timing that they fired me. Think about that for a second. They fired me during a pandemic. The worst time, the recession, the economy right now. What am I supposed to do, right? They disregarded anything. I can't even get my medical is going to be done in a couple of weeks. So think about the position they put me in. They didn't have no regards for my life they terminated me during a pandemic that's what people need to resonate that's what people are gravitating to like even the fact that you know i'm supposed to be quarantined everybody's overlooking that it's the fact that you did it in a time when this man myself can't do nothing to support his family or himself so that tells you 
what these people really are. They are monsters. And people need to wake up if you work for them. Uh, any type of billionaire right now because they, it's, it's about greed at the end of the day. Yeah. And greed is evil. Um, we all know that. Last few questions. I don't want to hold you too long. Um, sure. You had said that you took people, this is prior to the walkout, you took sets of people into the manager's office to try to, try to start a process of explaining the issues you guys had. How many times did you do that, and how many people were you taking in there, and what was every, what was what was explained? Every day, every day of the week, they got tired of me coming in there. Well, how I, many people? I was ten time, ten people at a time, fifteen. Sometimes I had thirty people at me one time. They got so tired of me coming in there every morning. I was interrupting their meetings. Didn't care. I didn't care. I, I did it every single day until they quarantined me. And why do you think they did that? They want to cut off the head of the snake. And the whole purpose was not to disrupt, but rather to convey a message, right? Uh, and what was yeah, the and, message you guys were conveying? I'm sorry about that. Amazon has open door policy. Okay. I mean, you can go in the office anytime. I was just exploiting what our rights was. That's all I was doing. And what would you guys say during the, during these ten person meetings? What would you guys convey about coronavirus? We, I let everybody speak individually. There was people in there saying, "Hey, look, I want the building closed because I got kids at home. I got, I want the building closed because I got asthma. I want the building closed. I got a grandmother at home. I want the building closed because I got an infant. Whatever their reasons were, I would let them let it be heard. And obviously, like I said, they disregarded all of that. Okay, it's all about the money. Um. I asked a couple people on Twitter, you know, if they had any questions for you. One was ADOS Red Bear, and you kind of answered this, but maybe you can go back over it one more time. Who specifically showed up with you during the, I guess, the walkout, and were other people retaliated against specifically from the walkout? Who specifically? My brother. Okay. My brother, Derek. Um, to be yourself on Twitter. I think I uh, posted him today. Uh, he stood by my side every step of the way. He supported me. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. What about he like was, in terms of race? Was it like blacks, whites? Everybody was out there. Everybody, protecting? everybody, and every race. I had everybody out there. Um, what was the second part of the uh, question? And, and, and was anybody else retaliated against from the wall? No, no, okay. absolutely not. It was just me. Um, I, I made sure of that. That's why when people was like, you're crazy for putting your name in that article. I said, you know what? I might be. But I don't want my people to to, to get retaliated on because I know how this company works. I've been there longer than them, longer than anybody in that building. So I said, if this is going to happen, I'm, I'm going to be the one that's going to take the brunt of it. And I'm willing to do that because, you know, like I said, I walk with the fate of God. And, uh, you know, he told me to do this. All right, and then this is from Bakara on Twitter, um, um, ADOS Capital. This is from uh, from um, ADOS Capital on Twitter. Um, how well? The first part is two parts of the question. When did you suspect the first Amazon COVID case? There's always rumors. Um, there's rumors all the time in the Amazon. Amazon is high school. Everybody that works for Amazon I tell you, Amazon is high school 2.0. If you ain't been to high school, work for Amazon. That is high school 2.0. There's always rumors. Um, I don't. I suspected it when you know February, people started March. When, when was like around when? Yeah, yeah. The same time February, March. The same time, the beginning. And I didn't know. I couldn't confirm it because obviously it's been under the wraps. But uh, you know, people talk. And once the rumors start, it's always some truth to a rumor. Small truth, whether it's truth or not, it's something. That 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 uh is truthful. And then the other question she had is, how are you doing personally, and is there a uh, a way for people to donate to you? Personally, you know what? I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. Um, at the first couple of days, that it was scary. The first couple of days, it was. I was in here. I think I broke down crying a few times. I think I broke down crying in the mid interview. With, uh, I did break down crying with uh, Jimmy Dior. You have to look that up on YouTube. Um, 
I broke down crying because I didn't know what was going on. Like, how did this happen? But I'm fine now. Okay. Um, as far as donating, I didn't, I didn't accept any money yet. Uh, what I'm trying to do, um, what my plan is, I'm trying to work out with my lawyer right now, um, is to make a GoFundMe that doesn't really support me, only me, because it's not about me. It never was. I want to support those who are being unpaid right now. So when I do do it, I want to make sure that I'm taking care of the right people. For those who work in my Amazon, especially my building, because I have a personal attachment to it, I want to make sure I'm paying them people first. Um, myself is secondary. But there is a GoFundMe out there that somebody in Virginia created. I don't, I don't know who. I, I caught wind of it like two days ago. But uh, there is a GoFundMe um, for myself. If you would like to donate, uh, you're more than welcome to. I'm not going to tell you you can't because it's actually somebody that took their time to do that. If, someone, if you Google it, you Google my name, Chris Smalls, uh, I think you can find it. I, I think I retreated it like once today. Um, like I said, um, it's, you know, people want to donate, they can donate to that. And um, I think we're in communication. My lawyer, I reached out to them. So if you'd like to... Uh, Google Chris Smalls. Uh, I think you will find the GoFundMe. Um, if that person meets that standard, then we'll take that money and uh, we'll uh, pay people and uh, myself secondary. All right, man. Well, I just wanted to get a chance to speak to you. I appreciate you to uh, coming on the show. Um, this is Tone Talks. Please go to tonetalks.org to subscribe or donate. Share this uh, video. We're going to get this message out. Man, I applaud you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Send me that link. All right, brother? No, no, no. All right.